playing Minecraft alone can get a little boring. So today I'll show how you can set up your own Minecraft server and play together with your friends. There will be totally free options, but also high quality options that are paid. First, let's take a look at Minecraft's own solution for this, which is the Realms, located right here in the menu. Minecraft Realms is a subscription service for your own personal server from Mojang. The cost of it can vary depending on which platform you want to play on, but as you can see here, for Java it is $8 per month. Once you have bought the subscription, the hard part is done. Now open your Minecraft tab again and just press on the Minecraft Realm button in the menu. Here you can create your own realm or join with your friends who have invited you. We can also configure a couple of things. For each subscription you have 3 slots for different worlds and also 1 slot for mini games. You can also change quite a few things in your world settings but I am not gonna go through all of them. This is perfect for younger players since it is safe and easy. But there are also some drawbacks. The view distance is capped at 12 chunks. Realms cannot be used in older versions of the game, which means you are forced to play the newest version. Also the game will kick you if you AFK for too long, which can be fixed with some anti-AFK machines. And you can't install any mods or plugins to your realm, which can be a huge deal breaker for a lot of people. So the decision if it's worth $8 per month is up to you. If you felt like Realms isn't for you, another option is to use a third party hosting provider. Most of the time, these have better value and performance than Realms. For this example, I'm going to use wisehosting.com, our own hosting website. The first step is always to choose your hosting plan. The general rule is the more players and mods you have, the more RAM you will need. I'm going to pick this one. Next, the location. This is simple. You get the best performance when you choose a location that is closest to where you live. For me, it is Germany. On this page, you can see the server specs, so you know what you pay for. And after adding the server name, you can choose some options. But storage wise, even our huge world is smaller than 10 gigabytes. So this is enough. And if needed, we can always upgrade it in the future. Depending on where you want to play, choose Java or Bedrock version for your server. After that, click save configuration and you are pretty much done. Before checking out, make sure you get the best deal by using the promo code Chalker and get 20% off from your first month. And easy as that, you have your own server hosted on wisehosting.com. But let's take a look at some of the features a third party hosting website can provide. First of all, mods. Mod packs and plugins can be all installed with a single click of a button. You can track your exact server performance to see what is going on, as well easily manage players or change versions. But the main reason why I like the third party providers is the support. I can have the ease of mind that if something happens with my server that there are professionals I can contact at any time that will help me out. So do your own research and pick the option that fits you the best. But what if you don't want to pay? There are quite a few options for that as well. Imagine your friends come over and you all want to play together. Just press escape and click open to land button. Choose what game modes, if you want the cheats enabled and your land server is ready. But keep in mind that this only works when you and your friends are in the same network. Also if the host of the server leaves, everyone will get kicked. But how can we prevent that? Well, that is our next method, setting up a LAN server that doesn't shut down when the host leaves. The first step is to download a Minecraft jar file from the official Minecraft page, which I will leave a link to down below. When that is done, put the jar file into a folder of your own choice, then create the note file in the same folder and name it start for example. Open the note file and paste this script into it. I will also put the script in the description, so you can just copy. Anyway, this part of the script has to be named the exact same as your jar file. So in my case, my jar file is called server.jar. So I will also put server.jar. If you want to allocate more RAM to your server, then change these numbers right here. For example, replacing this with 4096 will give our server 4 GB of RAM. After that, hit enter and on a new line type pause. It should all look like this now. Save the text file and change the file extension from .txt to .bat. If you can't see the file extensions, click on view tab and check the file name extension box. Now double click the bat file and the command prompt will open. If it gives you an error, you probably have an outdated java version. 
so make sure to update it. Press any key to continue and the window will close. Everything is correct, so don't get scared. To run the server we have to accept the Minecraft EULA. So open up the EULA text file that was generated and change the false into true. Then save it. After that run the bat file again and you are done. Your server now runs on your PC and as long as the terminal is open, the server will be open. To join with it, just use your local IP or if you are the host yourself, you can join just by typing localhost. You can also change your server properties in this node file if you want to set a larger view distance and so on. But all of this is still only working in LAN. So to make it public for everyone, we have a couple of options. The first one is to forward the port from the server, so players from other networks can also join. The default port of Minecraft Java is 25565, and it can be changed in the server properties here. The easiest way to forward the port is to go to portforward.com. The website has everything you need to know, just choose your router from the list, and they have a tutorial you can follow. Sometimes you might not be able to forward the port yourself, so you might need to call your internet provider and be like, hey, can you help open the port 25565? Though I would only recommend messing with port forwarding if you know what you're doing. Opening ports can cause security risks, and even if you manage to do it, you still might run into a firewall issue, which you then need to change to allow this port being forwarded. But well, what is the other option then? An easier alternative is to port forward using ngrok for example, that is basically a middleman between the local host and another player trying to join. With this people all around the world can join your LAN server. Sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Just go to ngrok.com and make an account. Next download ngrok and extract the zip file. Then just go back to ngrok.com and copy this command here. Open the ngrok.exe file and the terminal will pop up. Then just paste the command you copied and press enter. You can see that your out token is now saved. Next type in ngrok tcp double dash region and here goes your region abbreviation. I'm in Europe, so in my case it is EU. And at the end, type in the port that your Minecraft server is running on. You can check the port from the server configuration file or when you just open the land world in the game, the port will be shown in the chat. Mine is running on the default one, 25565. Then just press enter and ngrok will give you the IP. Just send this IP to your friends and they can connect from anywhere in the world without needing to port forward. I would also recommend using a whitelist on your server when using any of the hosting solutions. This way random people can't just connect to your server and mess something up. But if messing around with commands isn't for you, another option you can use is the essential mode. Just go to essential.gg and download the right version for you. Put the jar file into the mods folder and you are done, easy as that. Now when booting up your game, you can see that there are quite a few things we can do with this mod. But the feature we want to focus on is hosting your own world. So click on the host world button and choose which map you want to host. After that, choose your basic world settings like game mode and difficulty. Next, we can invite friends. Keep in mind that hosting a world this way will show your IP to others, so only invite people who you can trust. If you don't have any listed here, don't worry, you can also invite them later on. Finally, just press the host world button and your world is hosted. Keep in mind that in order for your friends to be able to join, they also must have their essential mode installed. It is worth noting that mod or plugin support is a lot more difficult when hosting a server this way. Other than that, it is a pretty cool mod if you just want to play with a couple of friends. Another option we can use to host a server is Aternos. It is a free service that will host a Minecraft server for you and your friends. Go to aternos.org, then sign up and log in. After that press play right here and then create a server. Choose the name and the description you like and click create. You are basically done. To start the server, just press the start button and your server will boot up. You probably have to wait in the queue before your server will start. And the performance might not be the best, but that is not surprising, considering it is a completely free service. Once the server has loaded, copy the IP and you can join with the server. Easy as that. Also one of the big downsides is that the world upload limit is 1GB. Our world for example is 7GB. 
So if you have a decent sized world, this option isn't probably for you. I also want to mention another method, using Oracle Cloud to host a Minecraft server. This process is a bit longer, so I won't go into details. Instead, I'm going to link this official tutorial from Oracle's blog down in the description. I haven't tried this method out myself, but on paper it sounds pretty good. 24GB of RAM and 4 CPU cores. And it seems like a pretty reliable method for hosting a powerful server for completely free. But keep in mind it is very technical, and if you run into any problems, there is no support to help you out. So in conclusion, if you want a reliable service with ease of use and real support, I would recommend a third party hosting provider, like Wise Hosting, where you can select the exact size and server of your needs. Or if you are okay with getting your hands dirty and are familiar with some technical stuff, then the best value is definitely Oracle Cloud, because it is completely free. I hope you learned something new about hosting and see ya in the next video, bye!